By the way, I should have mentioned that the last four notes of Schoenberg's row for that piece, pa, pa, pi, pi, according to the German notational convention, spell B A C H, which perhaps tells us something about the composer's mood when he wrote it. Um, if you were an American, an aspiring composer, and in your 20s, during the 20s, the chances are you ended up in Paris and once there came under the influence of an autocratic den mother named Nadia Boulanger. Boulanger held court for the musical expatriates much as Gertrude Stein did for the literary set. She was a Stravinsky acolyte and those of her pupils who survived the encounter with egos intact returned to the United States with a pronounced neoclassic bent and an equally pronounced distaste for what became known as the music of the second Viennese school, the music of Schoenberg and his pupils. Collectively, they represented the first generation of Americans, one must always find a special niche for Charles Ives, needless to say, the first generation concerned about the development of an indigenous American music. And the most interesting figure in the group, perhaps because he was the least doctrinaire and the most generous in spirit, was, of course, Aaron Copeland. And this is the sort of music he was writing when he arrived in Paris. Oh! <laughs> 
so 